What's up guys? I'm gonna let you know about all these scams to watch out for. So there are a lot of scams out there that are targeting photographers, especially new ones trying to make a name for themselves, and you've got to be vigilant about these. I can admit that I almost fell trapped to one when I was first getting started in this business. I was eager to get the job. Now this first one comes across as an email. I call it the family reunion scam. You'll get an email that has a lot of misspellings and a lot of grammatical errors, and just mainly broken English. They'll tell you that I need a photographer for the event. It'll be between five and six hours. Let me know your rate and availability. One of the dead giveaways is they use the word kindly a lot. Can you please kindly give me your rate? Can you kindly give me your availability? Now you may be thinking to yourself, great, a gig came across, I'm gonna get paid. And you may be eager to get the job, but there are a lot of red flags in what I just told you. Let's break it down. Hey, I have been doing this for a very long time. I've never, ever been hired to photograph a family reunion. B, a lot of these scams are targeted at people that are very eager to get work. So they will agree to whatever price that you throw out there. It could be several thousand dollars and they'll say, sure, I'll send the check. So one way that they do it is they will send you a check and you're great, cash in hand, I'm going to the bank. But you'll notice that it's, say you quoted them $2,000 for that event. They'll send you a check for 3,500 or 2,500. It'll be more than what you quoted them. You'll contact them up and they'll be like, oh, that's my bad. I was supposed to send that check to the florist, to the vendor, to the caterer, whatever it may be. And they'll ask you, could you just cash it and then give it to the caterer or send it to the vendor of whoever they said? And you being eager to please the customer say, sure, I'll take care of that. You go ahead and write them a check for the over amount and send it off to whoever it was. That money's gone. A few days later, that check bounces and you're liable for the full amount. The other way they do it is they ask for a bank transfer. You give them your banking information, bam, they clean out your bank. So A, never ever give out your banking information. Get a check, a clear check, not a cashier's check. Talk to your person over the phone or in person or get a credit card payment. Usually when you try to contact these people via phone, they always have some sort of an excuse while they can't talk to you over the phone. I'm deaf, I, whatever it may be, I have a cold. They always have some excuse and they will never talk to you over the phone. The best thing that I can do to deter these people is waste as much of their time as possible. For me, I get a kick out of it. I drag them on and on and on, getting them to send me stuff, sending me checks. They're spending money, their own money to send me that check. So yeah, keep sending stuff. I'm having a blast messing with them. Another popular scam is not so much a scam as it is kind of misleading. You'll be contacted by a magazine or a book or a publisher of some sort and they'll say hey we're having this photo contest and we would like for you to enter we saw your stuff online would you be interested and being eager to get the job you're like yeah sign me up what do i have to do they'll ask for a high-res photo that they saw online and then you'll send it to them and a few weeks later they'll contact you saying hey you won second place great job we're gonna feature you in one of our books. Now they will go ahead and print that book. They will go ahead and print that magazine, whatever it is. When they're done doing all of that, they'll tell you, hey, this book cost $100. Would you like to purchase it? And being very eager to see your work printed out in somebody else's product, like, yeah, I'll do it, $100. In reality, everybody that 
they contacted is a winner. They all got second place or third place. Now, there's no monetary cash value for that, but they suckered you into buying their product. Now, they may have a first place winner that they will have in the book, but it's usually a predetermined person that works for that company. Now, you got to think, they, they'll contact thousands of people at $100 a pop they're making a killing doing this, being very, very, very selectively honest. Now, another scam that is targeted at photographers is the eBay scam. So what will happen, say I owned this lens, this fisheye lens, and I accidentally dropped it, it got wet, whatever, it's broken. What they'll do is they will go on eBay and find somebody selling this exact lens in working condition and they'll go ahead and pay for it and that person will ship it out and they'll receive it and whenever they get it in they're like hey this is broken this doesn't work anymore you sent me a broken item and then you're like no it was working when I sent it to you but it's their word versus yours at that point and then they ship that back and you have a broken product and they have a freshly working product that they just stole from you. So ways to avoid that is every lens, every camera, every piece of gear has a serial number built into it. Whether it's software or it's actually printed on the item. Whenever you get a new piece of kit, take a picture of it and keep that somewhere safe. And also when you go to sell a piece of gear, Take a picture of that serial number and its condition and then keep that in your original post. Say you post to the Facebook Marketplace. Say you post to eBay. Make sure that serial number is posted. That way it helps deter whoever might be targeting someone who doesn't know better. Listen, at the end of the day, we're all working really, really hard on our craft that we absolutely love. And it's pretty crappy of somebody to come in and take advantage of that. We spend a lot of hours learning our craft. We spend a lot of money on our gear. We spend a lot of time perfecting everything that we do. So take these steps and try to protect yourself. Always think to yourself, could this be a scam? Trust your gut. Your gut will always tell you the truth. When in doubt, get that person on the phone, make sure they're a legit client of yours, and move on from there. So I hope you got something out of this video. I hope it's really informative, and I hope it protects you in the future from future scams. If you like this video and like the content that I'm producing, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you next time.